hello and welcome to this demo uh, so in the previous demo we actually discussed what is data mining what are its practical applications and how is it used uh, what are the different algorithms supported by uh, Microsoft etc so in this demo we would be more or less concentrating and working with a little bit of data uh, trying to use some of those nine algorithms um, that is provided by SQL Server data mining um, so basically um, it, to cut the long story short, let's just start off with something like, um, you know, what actually does mining provide for you? What is the value add that it gives you? So if you think about it, there's a lot of data around us and you be and um, basically, you, you know, day by day, um, um, you know, you would be asked certain questions which you need to answer using the data provided. But as such, in these circumstances, you will find that maybe not the, you know, just simple SQL, TSQL queries may not actually get those answers which your business actually demands. So these questions could actually be answered by actually looking at certain patterns that your data might produce. For example, say if you want to know how many cars a um, person owns, basically you start looking at data like, um, you know, how, how far does he actually stay from his office or how many children does he have, what is his annual income and um, basically how many children does he have, so on and so forth. So accordingly, you come to a situation where you can start predicting certain things. But this cannot be you know, generally possible by just firing some sort of queries. You need to actually use some sort of sophisticated algorithms and that's where mining actually comes into picture. So using data mining, you can actually start predicting, you can actually start uh, creating a model which predicts some sort of values um, that can actually be incurred using some past values. And basically Microsoft provides about nine algorithms which you could use in order to build a solid training model and um, start predicting the future. <clears throat> so, um, Microsoft actually provides two main tools. One is the Microsoft Excel and um, second is Business Intelligence Development Studio. Uh, Microsoft Excel is generally used by executives. It's much more easier to use, hence um, uh, much more flexible in terms of um, you know the overall uh, user scenario. So uh, much more easier actually. The other is basically more uh, aimed towards the developers. That is the Business Intelligence Development Studio that you can actually start creating some mining models um, you know defining some training data etc and starting to actually start analyzing different models and coming up with some model some perfect model which will suit your business needs and actually do some prediction also so let's just quickly jump into a small demo in this demo what we will try to do is we'll load some data and then try to predict um, how many cars will a particular person buy in the coming years um, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to quickly open business intelligence development studio let's uh, take some examples using bids for now and then be all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new analysis service project and let me call this as say a decision tree and I'll put it under a folder called decision tree and I'll call it as decision tree click on OK and it's going to create the typical folders for me which generally analysis service does on its own and if I open solution explorer you'll see that some of the folders are already created for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly define a data source and I do have adventure works installed on my machine. So I'm going to just reuse that table and I'm going to just use my test account training PC. And click on next and let this be the same. The next I'm going to create a data source view. me just use some table from here say a prospective buyer 
We'll add this table, click on next, click on finish. So it has added this table for me. Let me just quickly explore some data so that you, you guys get an idea of what kind of data we are dealing with. So basically, there's a very simple table which has the first name, last name, middle name, marital status, gender, the number of children, number of cars owned, etc. and so on and so forth. Right. So what we are going to do is, let me just close this and I'm going to create a mining structure right now. Clicking on next. I'm going to use the existing relational database and uh, so this is a step where basically we choose what kind of algorithm we need to use. For this example, let's keep it pretty simple. I'm going to predict using the existing data using Microsoft decision trees. So let me just finish this off and basically it's going to ask me what is going to be our input and what do you need to actually predict and what is going to be the key column. So in this case, what I need to predict is the number of cars owned. So let me just check on that. And what I need to feed into the mining model is basically the gender. Then I need the marital status. I need number of children at home. What else? Let's see. I need total children. Um, maybe the state province code and yeah the occupation definitely then i might need to give it a key so i'm going to give it the prospect alternate key so okay so i have just defined a brief model for my purpose right now and i'm going to click, click click on next so basically i need to configure this as to say um you know what is going to be my content type is my marital status being a discrete type or a continuous type so i generally use the detect and it's basically just rectifies according to a trend of data click on next and then basically it just says how many percentage of data is going to be used for testing so basically if there are say thousand rows and i say use 300 rows from it for testing purposes that means the prediction is going to happen on the remaining 700 rows so the use of this would be that if you were to compare an ideal scenario with an existing scenario this gives a perfect view of you know how your prediction is going on we'll dig more into this when you actually see the mining model working life so for now i'm just going to click on next and then it gives me a summary of this what do you need what do you want this mining structure to be called i'm going to call this as prospective buyer using decision tree just keep it a very simple name click on finish okay so i have a mining structure defined over here um, so I need to deploy this. So before that, some of the settings that I need to do, I'll just double click on data source. Make sure I provide the impersonation information correctly. This is fine. This is OK. And let me also do a quick check on the server name. On deployment, I'll just change this to my training server. Click on OK. And then basically we are good now let us just deploy this if i go to mining model viewer it's going to pop up a small message saying that we need to deploy this project so we'll go ahead and click on yes it's going to deploy it and process it and let me browse its content All right, so processing is complete. Let me just close all these boxes. And now what you see here is basically our decision tree. So let me just collapse all the levels initially. And if you just look at the legend, it basically, let me just expand this a little bit. Yeah. So it basically says that the value zero, there are 305 cases and it's represented as a green color bar in this decision tree now let's just look at um, the number of cars being two that is when would be a situation when people would buy at least two cars that is basically a blue line or say at least one car that will be a red line so i'm going to expand to the first level and it's basically going to categorize it to two parts um, so when you have the total children is equal to zero, you have this much amount. 
of that is about 126 cases when you have total children as one you have total children as four and so on and so forth so in this whole bar I see that the, the total number of children is equal to one uh, let me just expand this it started categorizing as occupation and um, the total number of children is one and the occupation is not management then there is a high probability that that particular person will have at least one car so this is how you start analyzing each of them like for example if you need to analyze people who might have say two cars right so that is this blue over here so you have the highest quantity when children is equal to three so a family which has at least three children and the number of children at home is not equal to four there is a strong possibility that people do go for four cars or two cars I'm sorry so this is how you start um, expanding your tree and studying the whole mining model as such So the second example that I can probably give you is how to determine whether a customer would be profitable or not. So in short, you call it as profitability analysis. So let's do this way. Let's try to build four models out of this and try to analyze which is the best model for this one. So if you see at the mining models, currently we have just one mining model that is the Microsoft decision trees. So what I'm going to do over here is add a couple of other mining models. So let me add the clustering model and I'm going to actually choose Microsoft clustering in this and click on OK. And so if you see, I'm going to take the same set of inputs um, and I'm going to actually start predicting the number of cars owned. So I'm going to add a second mining or a third mining model and I'm going to call this as neural network and as the name suggests I'm going to use the Microsoft neural network algorithm in this and the fourth would be um, say logistic regression and I'm going to actually start predicting using Microsoft logistic regression so I have four mining models ready with me and basically it does essentially the same things of taking the respective inputs and um, um, predicting the number of cars that is owned by that particular person. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to process all the models, uh, basically deploy them and process them. And let me run this. Okay. So this has been done. I'm going to close this. Okay. So now, if I look at the